All right, welcome back to Integral Physics. Today I want to look at the damp motion of a block on a spring. I'm going to show you the physics required to derive the equation of motion for a mass spring damper system. Then I'm going to put the equation into a computer model so you can see how each component of the equation contributes to damped oscillation. Now mass spring dampers show up everywhere. I mean, look at something like a mountain bike fork. See, a mountain bike fork has a viscous damper on one side, a spring on the other, and the oscillating mass is made up of the bike and the rider. So to derive the equation of motion, we're going to start by drawing a free body diagram of all forces acting on the upper side of the fork. So we have the force by the damper, the force by the spring, and last there's an external force, which in this case is the weight of the bike and the rider. So now that we've identified the forces at work here, let's insert them into Newton's second law. See, all we're doing is relating the forces in the problem to the motion of the mass. Starting with the load, which in this case is the force by gravity. Then there's the force by the spring, and the force by the damper. Next, let's expand out each of these terms. The force by the spring is given by K, the spring constant, times X, the displacement of the spring. This negative here is because the force by the spring is always in the opposite direction of the displacement of the spring. So if the spring is pushed down, the force by the spring is up, and vice versa. We see a similar relationship when looking at the damper. The damper force is given by a negative BV. If the fork is moving down, the damper force is in the opposite direction. So substituting these two expressions into the second law, we get an equation of motion that relates the forces acting on this mass to its acceleration. Now up till now, everything we've done has been physics, but we've reached the limit of how far basic calculus or algebra can take us. The problem is, position, velocity, and acceleration are all related through time, but there's no time in this function to tie everything together. So we have to turn to something in differential equations called a Laplace transform. Remember, velocity and acceleration are the first and second derivatives of position with respect to time, which in diffie q are shown as x dot and x double dot. So subbing these in, we get this function. Realize it's no different in meaning than what we had before. All we've done is gone out of our way to relate the time-dependent terms to one another. Now applying the Laplace transform to our time-dependent variables, position becomes capital X x dot becomes sx using what's called an operator variable. And x double dot becomes s squared x. So factoring out x, we get this. A function relating the load, spring constant, and damping coefficient to one another. Now to show you what this result means, I want to back up to Newton's second law and build this equation piece by piece in Excel. All right, we're looking at a plot of position versus time for our mass. So starting with nothing other than our external force of gravity acting on the mass, we see free fall. Now, if we put a spring in the way, one of several things can happen. And those outcomes are entirely dependent on the initial conditions. Think back to your first day of physics. If you integrate acceleration to find velocity, you need to interject the initial velocity. It's that plus C that your calculus teacher is always bugging you about and our equation of motion is no different. So if I slowly lower the block onto the spring, the block will settle at equilibrium, or in the case of our mountain bike fork, what we would call the sag point. But if the mass has an initial position or initial velocity, then we'll see oscillation. In physics, this undamped oscillation is called simple harmonic motion. And in the absence of a damper, it will go on forever. And as you see, as we change the spring constant, we change not only the period of oscillation, but we also move the point of equilibrium. Here we get to the main event, adding in a damper. As the damping coefficient is increased, we see the amplitude of oscillation decrease as the damper removes mechanical energy from the system faster and faster. And we can actually add in so much damping that the mass never actually oscillates. It just moves in one direction toward equilibrium and stops. And this leads us to the transition from what we call an underdamped to an overdamped system, or what we call critical damping. 
Now there's quite a bit to discuss with under versus over damp systems, so we're going to save that for another day. So this has been the equation of motion for mass spring damper system. And on that note, that's all for now. 